Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. We are back with another episode of the Rebuilding Blank series. Today we are going to be doing G2. Now I'm very, very excited to be doing this video for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, the Rebuilding TSM FTX video popped off. It went absolutely insane. I think we broke 5,000 views. I think it had like over 300 likes. The watch time was great. The interactions were great. The comments were great. We got so much feedback that was like, Yo, this is the best video you've ever made. Yo, I love this style of video. Yo, I love this content. Let's give us some more. And obviously, there's so many different teams we can rebuild throughout this whole offseason. It's still only August. We have still months to go until the offseason actually starts. And I didn't want to just flood you guys. I didn't want to burn you out of this series. So I'm trying to space them out a little bit. Maybe one a week, maybe two a week. Um, and that's why we're getting to G2 now. Um, also, G2 has a huge fan base. They're a very popular team. And they have so many choices this offseason. It's going to be very, very spicy for G2. Uh, so many different ways they could go. Uh, and I think that's what makes this rebuild extra fun. Hopefully, we'll be able to come up with something cool. Uh, and either way, hopefully, you guys do enjoy this. So definitely, again, guys, please drop a like on it if you guys do enjoy this video. Drop a like if you want to see more rebuilds. Because uh, if, this series can, if this series continues to do well, I'll continue making these. We have 10 teams in the LEC, 10 teams in the LCS. So many different opportunities of stuff we could do. I mean, some of these teams we could even go back through again. There's so many possibilities. Uh, subscribe to Tip Today and all my latest content, and consider checking out my Patreon, uh, the first link in the description below. That being said, let's get right into this, because this might be a little bit of a long one. We have a lot of stuff to get through. So here is the G2 offseason uh, kind of heading into it. We have G2 offseason by germ. We have all of the players under contract grabs is actually 2022. I didn't change that. Uh, we have Wonder signed until 2022, one more year in his contract. Yankos with one more year on his contract, Caps with one more year on his contract, Reckless with two more years, obviously since they just got him this past offseason, they signed him to a three-year deal, and then Mickey X, who is also going to be a free agent in 2022, and then Grabs, who also has one more year on this contract. So, to me, G2 is in a very, very uh, interesting position. They really have three options. One is, you know, keep the team, like, relatively... Uh, the same uh, with all these players uh, and try to win now. This is, you know, kind of hoping that this team bounces back, hoping this was just a bad year, hoping this was just a bad meta, um, hoping, you know, this team with Reckless in it just kind of needs some more time to get used to Perch not being there, get used to the new uh, players they have in order. I think keeping the roster relatively the same could even lead to a coaching change, you know. Um, I've talked about how I think they should move on from grabs, uh, how maybe that would be a good idea. Um, number two is cash out uh, because what is very, very interesting here is with all these players expiring in 2022, if they don't sell these players in this coming off season, then if this roster does poorly again in 2022 and decides to break up, decides to split up, G2 is not actually going to get any money for any of these guys. Despite having a ton of big name players, they could all leave. They could all walk. They could all leave G2 uh, and G2 could get nothing in return. Whereas if G2 sells some of these guys in this offseason or maybe even most of them, they can cash out and get a lot of money. And at the end of the day, Carlos is a businessman and G2 is probably going to be able to replace a lot of these players with at least side grades, if not slight downgrades, if not upgrades. So G2 could, you know, cash out, make a ton of money like they did with perks this past off season, um, and then have money to reload in the future, but also just make a bunch of money. Carlos is a businessman at the end of the day, uh, and selling off some of these players is definitely an interesting proposition since they have so many expiring contracts next year. And if you don't sell these guys now and find replacements for them now, you're going to be in the same spot next year when four-fifths of your lineup is free agents, except you're not going to have the opportunity to get anything in return for them. So yes, it does sound crazy to maybe sell Yankos, to maybe sell Mickey, to maybe sell Wonder because of how good they have been over the past couple of years, but I think it is honestly a realistic proposition. And then number three, which I think is the most unrealistic, is just rebuild you know blow the team up um maybe not completely you know you could maybe hang on to a player or two or three um but go young uh because in the first in the other options i'm thinking you know sell them off and get some other veterans get some big name players get some some solid players but you could also uh, start building for the future if you're G2. Now, I think that is very unlikely. I think G2 is a big name brand that needs to continue competing for world spots, competing for LEC titles. Um, but obviously, rebuilding is always a possibility, is always an option. I don't think G2 is going to do that, but it's one of the three possibilities. You know, in the world of infinite possibilities or whatever, 
G2 could potentially try to rebuild and maybe, you know, we should entertain those scenarios a little bit. So as far as the free agents, these are the free agents coming out of North America. Not a lot of big names here. Um, Broxa is maybe a little bit interesting. I don't think he's interesting when you're talking about G2, um, but, you know, maybe for some teams he could potentially be a name of interest. Um, we have P.O.B., DeMonte Smoothie, Acadian, Afro, Dardock. Not really anything too crazy there. Um, maybe Afro, maybe Dardock. Uh, the two real, like, S or maybe even A tier free agents coming out of North America are Santorin and Jizuke. Uh, again, not really names I think G2 are necessarily going to be that interested in, but just kind of giving you guys that info. Um, here's kind of the lower level free agents to me in terms of EU. Uh, Magic Felix, Cries, Nuke, Duck, Gilius, Neon, Limit, Jezus, Hear It. Razor, Kabe, and Vander. Um, now here at Razor, Kabe, Vander, they could maybe be considered, you know, like somewhere in the middle here. Um, but then I really see the top class of European free agents being treats, self-made, crown shot, BB, Karzi, Kaiser, Patrick, Whippo, and Hillisang. And I, those are more of the players that I think G2 is going to be entertaining, is going to be looking at. Um, when we actually look at internationally, there is kind of some other interesting free agents. Um, we have uh, Viper is going to be a free agent. We have Cryon is going to be a free agent. Um, I have a couple other names here as well. 369, Knight. Um, these are all names that could be interesting. Again, I don't know how likely any of these players are to leave or how likely any of them are to go over. Um, and then as far as out of Korea, we have uh, Chovy, we have Deft, we have Showmaker. Um, there's also like Doobie and Nuggery are both free agents as well, but I don't really even think those are that realistic. Um, and then uh, Rascal and Duke are... Deok Dam are, are free agents as well. Um, and then Maple, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, what was the other name that I said? Oh, yeah, Rascal. Um, and then Maple is also a free agent. So here's just kind of a comprehensive list of who the big name free agents are. Obviously, buyout targets are always going to be an option. We'll talk about some of those. Um, but as far as the G2 lineup, who I think are the very, very realistic, very, very reasonable names for them? Um, honestly, I would have to put every single G2 player in the reason in the most likely category. Um, we'll, we'll put, we'll throw a couple of other names in there as well, but I do think that, um, G2 is likely, uh, at least them staying the same is, is fairly likely. I don't think they will stay the same. I think they will make at least one change, but I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be surprised if any of these guys do come back now in the top lane. I do think they have some options as well. I think broken blade, um, is definitely an option. Um, as far as other top laners, I don't really know, you know, too much, um, uh, of who it would potentially be. Um, you know, it's not like Bwipo is going to come back to top lane and go over there. Maybe here it is an option. Um, I, I, I wouldn't even put that in the most likely category. I would put that in like a, a maybe we can say here. Uh, I don't really see that happening. Um, in the jungle, I think, uh, I think self-made we can throw into the likely category um, just because, you know, he is seen as a big name jungler. He is seen as a possibility. Um, I would put inspired maybe into this reasonable category because um, inspired is weird for me. He's obviously just one MVP, so I would make him a serious buyout target for G2. Um, but two things, Rogue was the best team in the regular season and he just signed an extension with Rogue. But then on the other side, Rogue just kind of got slapped around in the LEC playoffs. So maybe that team could blow up maybe their roster could get crazy you know who exactly knows um as far as the mid lane i really expect them to hang on to caps i don't even really think it's worth putting any um other names in the likely category i could see you know if you want to say chovy um if you want to say i mean showmaker um but i you know i don't really think either of these guys are coming to g2 i don't think that's the way they're gonna go um in terms of other players i mean there's there's nobody there's not really any mid laners um you know, maybe there's the world where, um, maybe I, I didn't see that this is uh, off the page. Maybe there is the world where, um, Mad Lions blows up and, and you know, humanoid comes to, to G2. Um, but I, I think that's very, very unlikely. So I, I don't really expect that to happen. Um, as far as 80 carries again, Reckless is signed for two more years, I, even though people are saying, oh, I hate Reckless's play style, or oh, I told you they weren't going to win with Reckless, blah, 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 blah. Like, Carlos knew his play style. Carlos knew what he was about before he signed him. I don't think they would have signed him to a three-year deal um, just to move on from him. Uh, and then support is where I think things actually get 
pretty interesting for G2 here. Um, I think Treats is a very, very likely possibility. Um, and then I think Kaiser is also a very, very real possibility. This guy is a free agent. Um, he is a name that's definitely going to be thrown around. Um, you know, maybe you can say that Hillisang is a possibility. Um, you know, I, I would say a Hilly is a maybe. I, I really think that's very, very unlikely. Um, as far as reasonable answers, um, I could see Razork here as well. If you want to make a case for Razork potentially going to G2, he was like an MVP candidate uh, in the LEC this year. So I, I think there are a couple of different names. I think that most likely G2 will be building around a mid and 80 carry. I think Caps and Reckless are very, very marketable players. They're huge names. They are still seen as some of the best in their position, even though Caps had a down year, even though Reckless maybe wasn't insane. Um, but, you know, I could definitely see them uh, going with this. And then in this option, if they decide to move on from some of these players, Wonder could turn into a lot of money. You know, Wonder is definitely a guy that you could sell off. You could get some green there. Um, Mickey is definitely a guy you could sell off. You could make a little bit of cash there which would obviously be very very good yankos is a guy that you could definitely sell off and get some cash there and then you have the option of sitting on some cash just making some money you have the option of you know going out and, and helping sign uh, some other players it can maybe help you sign some players in some other games um you know you really have all different kinds of options here um, but the only thing for G2 is that if they are going to make moves, it's going to be for high level players. It's going to be for cream of the crop players. Um, I don't know if I talked about this either, that it, it's like reported that reckless and self-made maybe don't get along or don't like each other um, or don't like playing with each other. So maybe that does hurt, uh, you know, the, the options of moving to self-made a little bit. Um, maybe that would even mean if they went after self-made, they would move on from reckless. Um, you know, I, I don't know exactly how that would go down, but as far as what I would do, I think that BB is a, a very, very likely candidate for uh, G2. Now, BB is obviously, there. there's been stated that there's going to be interest in 100 Thieves um, for, you know, reaching out to Broken Blade, but I don't know, does he even want to come back to North America? Did he like North America more? Did he like Europe more? Um, does 100 Thieves even still want to move on from someday now that they've won the LCS Championship? How are they going to do at Worlds? I don't exactly know, um, but to me, he seems like the most likely candidate to replace Wonder, um, and, and, you know, this would be selling Wonder. Now, I don't know if this would be in the LEC or in the LCS, but I would definitely be getting some money uh, for Wonder there, which would, uh, you know, help out the team in turn. Um, now, uh, in the jungle, I guess if I'm them, I I'm going with Yankos. I, I think he's in a really, really tough spot because I think he is very, very good. Um, I think he's going to see a ton of interest from Cloud9, a ton of interest from TL. I could absolutely see him, uh, you know, being sold off. But my thing is, who would G2 get to replace him in the jungle? If it's not self-made, if it's not inspired, if it's not Razork, I don't really see another big name jungler that, uh, you know, G2 is going to have as an option. So I think even though Yankos is probably the guy I would want to sell off the most, because I think he has the highest value, um, especially because there's big name North American teams that are definitely going to be interested in him. I really think he's the best fit for, for uh, you know, G2 right now. He had a good season. He is a good jungler. The only thing about him is he's contemplating retirement and stuff like that. So I can't be too, you know, confident in him being around for the long haul. That's the only thing that scares me. That's the only reason why I would maybe want to sell off Yankos. But, you know, in the end, I would probably keep him. Like I said, I would definitely keep Caps and Reckless. Those are kind of the guys I'm building around. Those are the guys I'm getting uh, for the future. If I'm here, I'm trying to, uh, you know, re-sign Caps as soon as I can. Even though he's not coming off the best split, I still think he will be back. I still think he's a very good guy to have in your team. Reckless, he's got two years left. You can kind of play that out. Um, I'm also selling Mickey. Um, and then as far as the coach, I'm probably going to, I don't know, I guess promote Nelson. Um, promote Nelson slash look for another coach. I think grabs is kind of played out here. I don't really know who the other coach would be. I think coaching is so hard to get into, um, but you know, I, I think it is time to move on from grabs. And then as a support, uh, you know, I would be, you know, throwing all of my money at Kaiser, trying to sign him to like some big name contract. And I think this G2 team would be pretty sick. Um, now in the end, if we could get self-made, if self-made and reckless would get along, I would really like to sell Yankos and slide in self-made here. 
because then you could be sitting on so much cash. You could be sitting on so much money. Um, but I do think this is, in the end, a pretty likely scenario, a pretty reasonable scenario. I don't think it's anything too crazy. Um, and I also think it would be upgrades for G2 overall. I think Kaiser would be an upgrade over Mickey. I think BB would be an upgrade over Wonder. I think this team would play well together. Um, I think you can leave Reckless weak side. You can allow Kaiser to roam around the map. You can allow Broken Blade to be a carry in the top lane that you play through. Um, and I really think these guys would synergize well. I think this would be a dope lineup. I think people would be excited excited about them. BB is very marketable. I could really see this happening. And this is how my rebuild of G2 would go down for the 2022 off season. But that is pretty much it for this video today, guys. Definitely drop a like if you did enjoy it. Again, I would appreciate the love so, so much. These videos take a little bit more research. They take a little bit more time. Uh, and they're, you know, a little bit harder to make, but I think they're so, so much fun. These are my favorite videos to make. I hope you guys like them because I really, really want to make more of them, but I'm not going to make more of something that's not performing well on my channel because I need my channel to grow at the end of the day. Leave a comment down below um, posting what your lineup in 2022 for G2 would be. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Subscribe to stay up to date on all my latest content. Hopefully, I get you guys the next one. But until then, peace.